Hello again, everyone. Well, <laughs> I have just taken delivery of my fifth and sixth mystery bags from Gummy Appel in the UK. <laughs> Can't resist a bargain. Um, Matthew has been brilliant trying to make sure that people don't get duplicates in some of their ba mystery bags. But I do have some. Uh, and here are a couple that I've found. I've already got a pennant. And this, this one just came as well. And I've got two of those. So I'm going to um, pass these on to other people. And I think anybody who is a, a Gummy Pan fan, if you've had any of the mystery bags and you do happen to have a duplicate, despite Matthew trying so hard to make sure that you don't, perhaps it's a good opportunity to make friends with people and do a swap. Have a swapsies or just introduce somebody new, maybe, to the company. So uh, on my... Uh, YouTube channel, I am approaching 20,000 subscribers, which to me is just almost unbelievable. So I've got about 500 to go. So when I do get there in celebration, I'm going to send out a few bits and pieces as a thank you to my subscribers. So if you haven't subscribed, I'd be really grateful if you could. A lot of people watch very frequently but haven't actually clicked the button to subscribe so I would be really glad if you could do that. And also those who have been subscribed for a while please check because the numbers do fluctuate and sometimes YouTube seems to unsubscribe people without them realising it. So that's the first thing. I will be sending out a few little bits and pieces sometime in the not too distant future to some of my subscribers and commenters, people who've left comments, so I know who they are. Don't know who they are if you don't leave a comment. Um, two of the things that came, one in a previous um, bag and one in, in the one, one of the ones that's just come, I don't remember which, but when I first saw them, I thought, oh, there's another duplicate. But in fact, they are not duplicates. They're different unicorns. This one's got a, a tail going down. That one's got a tail going out. This one's got um, the main, most of the mane behind it. So they are different. So I thought I'd make a quick card with a couple of unicorns on. One of the other things in my mystery bag was this fabulous set of cloud dyes. Now, I've never seen cloud dyes like these. These are double stitched. The cutting line is in between the two stitching lines, which means that if you cut one out, you get the stitching lines on it. And if you make an aperture, you get the stitching lines on that one as well. Fabulous. So I thought I was just having a play this morning, really, and colouring away. And I thought rather than go mad with colour, I'd just keep the colour into the, the mane and the tail. So, cut out a card panel, took the larger of the two stitched clouds to make an aperture, cut out one of the smaller ones to add as a, a thing on the top, and then I'm just actually going to pop my unicorns onto the top like this and pop that up onto foam tape so that there's a bit of interest and Gummy Pan's little birthday, I've got, I've got one cut out here that's got foam tape on the back, which I'll put on in a moment. But I just cut one out quickly to look. And this Gummy Pan happy birthday is just the perfect size for in that corner there. So I'll just show you how I went about um, colouring the unicorns. And um, then I'll assemble the card. So what I do to keep my um, dies and stamps together, I have a little drawer for, um, this is one of the Tonic Studios sets of drawers. When they come, you can't get the drawers out. But because they're on a shelf, you know, higher up, 
I can't see what's in if I can't get the shelf out. So it had little lugs underneath, which I just got rid of so that the drawer comes out completely. Um, that's by the by, but I just thought it might be useful for some people to, to know. So I keep dies and stamps together. I've got the, the stamp on the back and the die in the front with the picture in my little drawer. That's, that's one size and this is another size. So they'll be going in here and away. The ones that are just, this is only for dies that have stamps or just for stamps. My dies are in one of my die boxes. Okay, now because these um, rubber stamps are just the rubber, there's no cushion. When I am stamping them, I like to put a cushion of some description underneath the card because this very resilient surface here, sometimes you might miss the odd little bit. Whereas if you've got a, a softer surface underneath, you've got far more chance of getting a good impression. So I'm going to use VersaFine Claire ink and I'm going to stamp my dear little unicorn. He's a jolly chap, isn't he? Really jolly. Give it just a moment for the ink to transfer. Beautiful. Look at that. What a good impression. That's terrific. So all I did was get out my um, Nouveau markers, got one of each colour of the rainbow, and just thought I'd do a little bit of colouring. So let's just see how we go. And I started at the top, well, left to right, a creature of habit, just putting on a little bit of colour onto the mane. Um, I think that'll do for there. A little bit into here. Red. Yeah, the only Cleo was here. She told the order. She knows a thing or two. Does young Cleo? There we go. Orange, yellow. There's not going to be room for all of them in both places, but never mind. I think it just gives the you know the, the overall impression. Just going over the line a little bit just to blend the two colours together. I'll have to do this bit behind in a minute. Not make too much of a straight line. Oops, wrong end. Need something a little finer. Okay, I'll just fill in that bit at the back in a minute. Tiny bit here. Tiny bit there. A little bit on the end of the tail. So let's come backwards on this one. Put a bit more of the purple. There we go. Now the green. Put a tiny bit of yellow in there. There we go. Multicoloured. Now, to do the shading, I just used this feather grey and went round the extremities, really, just to add that little bit of definition. Just a bit of... For some reason, the thick end of this, this particular marker is, is faring better than the other end. I'm not sure... If you can get refills for these, I just, I just don't know. But I use this feather grey, an incredible amount for shading. So, just going round most of the edge. Let's do a little bit round the face, under the chin, round the jaws, round the mouth, like this. Now, just to smooth that out a little bit, I've got a clear blender. And I'm just going to go over the edge of where the, the grey one missed. It looks like it's grey now, but it actually will 
will dry out a bit. There we go. Now, for the, um, the horn and the hooves, I use this Spectrum Noir Fine Point Metallic Paint Marker. They come in a set of three. I've got a silver set and a gold set. This is the very fine one. There's a medium sized one and then a sort of a chisel pointed one. So this one will cover the lines. It will cover black lines. So if I were to go straight up and down that uh, horn, those spiral lines would be lost. So I'm just going to put a hint of gold in between and it'll be enough to give the impression that, that it's kind of there. So just gently, this one's got a thing missing there. It's got a, a hoof line missing. So there we are, one unicorn. So the next thing is to cut him out. This is the one, I have to look closely to see which is which. And because it's an open die, it's kind of easy to, to, to position. So. I take a little bit of time because sometimes it's not absolutely obvious if you're in a completely the right place. You might think, oh, yes, that's right there. But the other side could be, you know, slightly out like that. It, it's very little movement to make a really good cut. So you just need to take your time. And then once you think you've got it, tape it. Because the, the journey to the to the die cutting machine or actually putting in your top plate or whatever can disturb your positioning. So just take a bit of time and tape it down. Right, here we go. Right, let's have a look at this. Having said all those words, I'm just hoping that this one's going to... Oh, left it behind. Where's my poker tool? Here we go. And there is our unicorn. Pretty good for being even around. So, now all I need to do, I could use... He's ready for a new car, so I'll put him on something else. Let's just assemble this, this one. Um, I will cut out... Well, I have cut out this one with a piece of double-sided tape on the back. So let's just see if this comes out quite happily. Sometimes double-sided tape is so sticky. The stuff that's in a, a thinnish reel is so sticky that you really can't, you really can't get it out. And I think this might be one of those particular rolls. I think I probably got it. I don't know where I got it from really. And let's try some sticks to any, I haven't got any sticks to anything. Now, I don't know if they do it. I, Let's look in the catalogue. No, that's not going to come. So this is the one that I'm going to do. I'm going to stick this. So let's get something to put a little. One of the easy ways to do this, as it's so narrow, is to put a little bit of glue on a surface. Like this. And then just either dab a, a finger or a piece of sponge into it and just, if I keep this very still, shouldn't get any on the back. There we go. No, there's none on the back. Just wipe my finger on a piece of tissue, use my tweezers to hold it and we can stick it down there we go perfect that is just straight cut with no sticky on the back i just did hope that it would work the other way but sadly not right i'm now going to put some double-sided tape on the back of this some double-sided foam tape that is so that it will be raised from the surface of the card. Right. Let's put a little bit there. A little bit there. And I think we'll put some narrow around the edge. This is a bit of a, when it's a bit close to the edge. I am 
wondering whether to put something behind this that's going to look sort of like fluffy clouds. That one's going to go on there and it's going to be stuck on flat. So let me just put that on before I lose that. Okay, well, I'll use this glue. Um, I'm just going to get a embossing folder. I've selected a few for consideration. I've got hearts. Don't know what they would look like behind there. That might look quite nice. Or oh, these are just, it's a bit like snowflakes, really. That's quite a nice, simple one. Might look a bit like rain. I don't know if I want it to look like rain. We have more hearts here, but these are in straight lines. I can't open it. There we go. See what that looks like. It's not bad. That's not bad. This one is just sort of confetti kind of stuff. It's just odds and ends. That's not bad either. It's got stars and all that kind of stuff. And this one's swirly bits. No, I don't like that one. Um, this one is just kind of dots again. That looks more like rain. So, I, th I, quite, I quite like this one or the, the random heart one. That looks quite nice. Uh, that's got some hearts in as well, hearts and stars. Let's have this one. Let me just, uh, will that fit? Yep, that's, that's, that's big enough. Just cut a piece off this. To emboss. These are just the off cuts when I make a square card. Okay, do I want to think I want it this way? Right, we will now just emboss this. I thought I knew to put that in actually, but never mind. So there we have these random hearts and that's quite nice, isn't it? So we'll pop that behind here. So I need to put another piece of tape on there to grab it. Just at the top here. Okay. Put a bit there too. Good job people can't see the back, isn't it, really? Remember when you are school doing needlework, people were supposed to be able to look at the back and see, have it almost as, as neat and tidy as, at the front, as the front. Right. Let's get this bit off. which way up the hearts are facing always so I don't think that matters right I'll pop that onto there yeah that's good now I'll put this onto the card base and then we'll pop the unicorns on and we'll be done quite a lot of fun not a lot of fuss Oops, get a bit more glue on it. There we go. Right, one to go on there. And where's the other? One of them to go up there. I think that'd be fine. Yes, this one can just be um, glued on. I think I'll just put a bit around everywhere. This this morning was a little blocked because I had left the pin out. So what I did, I used 
the pen, I got some um, essential oil, a bit of essential oil, put it drop onto the desk, put my pen into it and then just put it up and down the tube a few times and it cleared it beautifully. So there's a thought for another time. Right, some of this needs a bit of foam tape on. A touch of glue on his nose, his feet and his tail and foam tape up, up his neck. Right. Right. Let's put some glue in the other places. Just along the top here. His tail and his feet. Do I need any more? Do I need any more foam tape? Yes, a little bit across his middle, I think. Just a tad. There. There we go. So, quick birthday card. Simple, straightforward. Um, if you can help me on my way to my 20,000 subscribers, that would be absolutely wonderful. Um, if you're indulging in more mystery bags from Gummy Pan, fear not. I am sure there could be, it's like, it's like, um, trading cards isn't it you know you could, you could uh, do a swapsy make a new friend donate generally pass on a little bit of fun a little bit of good nature so there we go one more card for the pile thank you for watching thank you for subscribing and i'll see you next time